Susie, lovely to see you. It's lovely to see everyone with us as well, as always. Um, the eagle-eyed amongst you will see that um, it's a different background for me today. So um, uh, we're back in the office today, which is, um, which is great. We've been here for a little while, but um, it just so happened the days that I've been at home have been the days that um, we've kind of run the webinars. But uh, office life is kind of trying to return a little bit back to normal again. So, um, so it's good news on that front. So thanks to everyone joining us. And of course, thanks to... Uh, the lovely Susie. Um, it's great to it's great to have you on board again for for the newbies amongst you. Susie's been running her um, her bi bi weekly uh, mindset masterclasses for uh, for some time now. Response has always been fantastic, and uh, she's built up a, a wonderful little community here. So everybody that's here, come and say hello in the chat box. Come and let us know where you're dialing in from. Um, it's um, it's great to to kind of see and um, say hello to everybody. So Susie, there's, um, there could be a bit of background noise and people kind of walking past. So yeah. I'm gonna reduce my screen down today. Okay. Um, I'm still gonna be here, I'm still gonna be watching, <laughs> but I didn't want that to just kind of jump in whilst you're talking. So yeah, no, that's I'm, fine. I'm, yeah. I'm still here, I'm still listening, I'm still talking, um, but just wanted to kind of give you that heads up because normally I'm, I'm there in the background, aren't I? So, yes. um, uh -huh. but, <laughs> but I am here. Good to see you, Eva Marie. Lovely to see you. Come and say hello to everybody. Um, so, Susie, as always, no one's here for me. Over to you, and uh, lovely to see you. To record that catchphrase, it's perfect. Um, thank you, Paul. Lovely intro, as always. And thank you to everyone that's taken time out of their day. I know there's so much going on in the world, and I really appreciate you um, taking your time to invest in a little bit of um, time here to learn about what I'm going to share with you today. Um, so we've got Eva Marie coming in from Northwest Essex. Where's everyone else starting um, in from? I am coming in from a little place called Causton in Surrey in the UK. Where about everyone else? Just pop in the chat box. We do might try and make this quite interactive. We've got um, Seven. Is that how you pronounce your name? Apologies if not. Um, Darling in from Dubai. We've got Paul in London. We've got East Sussex. Oh, Vera from St Albans. Hi, Vera. That's my hometown. I was born in St Albans, so we have something in common. I want them to mute themselves if they're not muted, like SL. I, I can't, why can I? Yeah. And Paul, if you could just mute everyone because otherwise the background noise gets a little bit distracting. Um, I don't know who SL is, but they've not got, yeah, they're, thank you so much. Thank you. Obviously, it's just a bit difficult to focus on what I'm sharing. Darling in from Strictly Towers, the city of London. Amazing. So we have got people coming in from different locations. Well, welcome everyone. So for those of you who don't know me, because I know that we have some newbies each week, I'll just give you a little bit of an introduction to who I am and what I do. Um, so I was an executive and a personal assistant in London for 22 years before retraining as a coach. I'm now a business and a mindset coach and I help executive assistants start their virtual assistant business by helping them discover the how of finding clients. But I am a big love of the mindset because the mindset is the key. It's the kind of missing piece. So that's a little bit about me. Um, if you want to connect with me, please do send me a connection request on LinkedIn. I accept all connection requests. So today we're talking about how fear is taking control of our life and what we can actually do about that. And there is a lot of fear in the world, especially this year, perhaps more than other years, what with everything that's going on in the world with the global pandemic. And I'm going to address in today's talk, which will be about half an hour, how fear is affecting our life from different areas, from our health, our, our mental and emotional well-being, our career, our home environment, our relationships, etc. But I'm also going to share with you some practical tools that's going to help you address your fears and really help bring you back into the present moment so you can start to live with more ease, grace and flow. So what exactly is fear? Well, on a physiological level, fear is an emotional response to an event, an experience in the world. Our brain reacts to what it perceives as danger, and our brain is effectively two million years old, it's reptilian brain. And when we see what we consider to be a threat to ourselves, 
we go into what's called survival mode, which is effectively our autonomic nervous system pushing us into fight and flight. And that fear response exhibits in our body, such as a racing heart, shallow breathing. So there's different ways that we can breathe. And when we're stressed uh, and in fear, we breathe through our chest. So we breathe up like this, our shoulders go up. Can you see how my shoulders go up instead of breathing through your stomach? When your stomach's don't, stomach doesn't go up, it goes out. And so there's a difference. So your chest goes up when you're, you're stressed, your shoulders go up, and that restricts the amount of oxygen you can actually get into your lungs. So there's different ways of breathing. I'm not going to go deeply into that because it's not really my area of expertise, but it's something to recognize um, in terms of that fear state. Also, when we're in fear, our focus gets narrowed. We can't focus, we can't get into action. Our muscles tense and it's just difficult to do anything. We have so many different fears in life. <laughs> um, so many different fears. And a lot of them, if not all of them, are based on irrational, ir they're irrational. They're based on our belief system, the beliefs that we've created. Um, throughout our life, forming from our early years as a child into our adult years. Common fears are things like um, the fear of the unknown, the fear of uncertainty. And I know there's a lot of that in the world right now. Um, what with what's going on with the global pandemic and so many redundancies, particularly in the assistance space. So that fear of the unknown, the fear of uncertainty, and the brain doesn't actually like change, it doesn't like uncertainty. It sees it as a threat, okay? It sees it as a threat to its safety and survival. So it will do whatever it can for you to keep the, you know, the status quo um, and just stay in your comfort zone, which is why when a lot of people, when I speak to a lot of assistants that are looking to build their business, they've been thinking about it for a while and their brain, their subconscious mind is trying to keep them safe by pulling them back and feeding them thoughts and images about why they shouldn't take that action step. It's not safe. Okay, so that's a really common fear. There's lots of other fears. We can have fears of failure, fear of success. Like, what if I can't handle the success that I create? Like, I want to, you know, my goal is to create a six and seven figure business. Um, but I might then, when I start to scale, I might start feeling into that fear of, like, oh my God, I've got all this to do, I've got all this responsibility. Fear of letting other people down, fear of judgment, fear of ridicule, so many fears. I mean, please feel free to ch um, chat in the chat box and let me know, you know, what you feel that your fears are, what, what is strongest for you. I think one for me is the fear of letting others down because I love what I do and I love empowering assistants and women so much to believe that there is another option outside of the nine to five that you can break that status quo and that you can actually create a life in your dreams and that fear and doubt doesn't have to hold you back and stop you. So if, you know, feel free to pop anything in the chat that you want, any of your fears that are coming up and fears that you might be experiencing now with what's happening in the world, society, etc. So we have fears and we also have something called phobias, which are the same, it's a fear, but it kind of takes it to the next level. So a phobia is when it effectively affects the quality of our life and it literally stops us taking action. Like a phobia could be fear of heights, um, fear of flying. So, you know, you can't travel, you can't maybe, you know, climb a beautiful mountain, which I love to do. And it really affects the quality of your life. It just puts so much fear into you that it, it just paralyzes you. So fear can literally affect every area of our life. Okay. So we've got Gillian says, I'm not who I was 10 years ago and fear and becoming and doing something different. Yeah. And Gillian, that is just your mind trying to keep you safe. Because if you think about it, you know, I don't know how old you are, but let's just say 10, 20, 30 years, however long we've been living on this planet, that is years and years and years of programming, of programming that we've received in from our parents, our society, that we've been taught to believe in a certain way. And it takes time um, and consistent effort to start reprogramming the way that you think and feel for that to change. So the brain, the subconscious mind literally wants to keep you safe. Um, so where was I? Um, yeah, fear can affect us in all different areas of our life. So fear 
and then affects us on a physio physiological level, which creates stress and different emotions such as anger, frustration, sadness, overwhelm, depression, etc. And when we are affected on a physiological level in terms of our emotion, in terms of negative emotions like that, it does have, it can have a detrimental effect on our relationships if we're stress because we're fearful about something then we can be a bit snappy with our partner we can lose focus at work because we're so worried that we're going to be made redundant or if we're looking for work then we're so focused on the fear and the emotion that comes with that around you know finding a job that it's difficult to focus on getting into action and i will talk about that later and ultimately fear can affect our health because you know when our autonomic nervous system kicks in and puts us into fight and flight. We can't sustain that in the long term, okay? So it does affect our, our body and it creates what's called dis, eat, dis ease in our body. Um, but it does serve a purpose. Fear does serve a purpose. It's there to keep us safe, but it, it doesn't need to control us, okay? So I just say it doesn't need to control us. So what happens, let me just check, it says, um, even Maria said, I find that I'm not who I was either two years ago before my redundancy, not able to get out of the cycle of being unemployed. I was pretty confident, I was not, um, it has not my confidence and I'm worried as a result. Yes, I fear, I guess. Yeah, okay. So maybe it's a fear of not being able to move forward, a fear that you'll always be where you are. And um, I just check in with what comes up in your body. But the more that you focus on your fears, and I, I talk about this all the time, but the more you focus on your fears, that, that's the more, the more you're going to feel that. We have something in our mind called the RAS, the reticular activating system. And it's effectively what we focus on persists. So if we start focusing on, you know, worry or um, doubt, or even if we just start focusing on red cars, we start seeing or feeling more of what we focus on. And fear's not going to go away. It's part of us, but it doesn't have to control us. Um, and I love that people are sort of sharing and like, you know, we're not alone. Like we all have fear. I have my own fears. I'm not Everest, um, I can't say that word, but I'm not, you know, I don't, you know, I have fear as well. I have my own fears, but there are ways that you can tackle your fears and overcome them and, and get more control because fears effectively force evidence appearing real okay for fear is often like stories in our head okay so what happens when we face our fear well i'm a big fan of tony robbins and i think this is what this is from tony but he says how you start your day is how you end your day so how you start your day is how you end your day so if you're starting your day filling your head with thoughts of fear worry anxiety overwhelm etc all those negative emotions filling your mind full of the negative picture or maybe you're seeing another rejection email or maybe you're looking at a bank balance which isn't where you want it to be but things that take you down then that's how you start your day and that's how you'll finish your day because you'll keep focusing on that so when we shift how we start our day we shift how we finish our day and we shift how we feel throughout the day takes practice I still you know sometimes fall out of the practice of doing my mindset work and I have to get back on the wagon <laughs> so to speak I have my own coaches that remind me and support me and I'm here to do the same in the short time that we've got together today so when you start the day with gratitude it destroys fear okay you literally cannot be fearful and grateful at the same time so this morning I was out on my bike and I was cycling along and um what well, love love that saying what the how you start your day is how you end your day yeah i think it's from tony robbins i'm a big fan of tony robbins but it's true how you start your day is how you end your day so um so i've got to stretch this little mouse outside of the garden <laughs> um so where was i um yeah so gratitude so when you start your day with gratitude and i was out on my bike this morning and I was feeling a little bit anxious. I was like, mm, there's a little bit of fear coming up. I was like, okay, so what can I be grateful for? So I was grateful for the muscles in my leg, which allowed me to turn my pedals. I was grateful for the freedom of being on my bike. I was, um, 
you know, grateful that I had a cycle lane because where I live there's a, a big road called the Brighton Road and some big lorries go past there. So I have my little cycle lane, which makes me feel safe. And as I was thinking about these things that I'm grateful for, even now I can feel myself changing, like my, I'm smiling more. And when we do this, when we focus on gratitude, we, we change our emotional response, our physiology changes. So we start to, you know, I'm smiling away like, like mad now, but we start to feel different. So when you start to feel fear coming in, focus on what you're grateful for, like what makes you happy. Um, and know that you can't be fearful and grateful at the same time. When I was starting to be grateful this morning, the little bit of fear that I had, it went okay because I was smiling it changes my it changed my emotional response and it just basically put me into a happier state which produced serotonin and the positive happy chemicals okay so start the day with gratitude because when you start the day with gratitude you see the world through a different a different lens a different set of eyes um and I would say like change the picture in your mind like are you because we're, we're all visual, even if we think we're not. If I said to you, describe your, the colour of your front door, but like, I'd say, why? And how do I know that? Because I saw a picture in my mind. We're all visual. And it, it may not be our strongest sense. Like some people are more kinesthetic, that like touch and feel. Um, some people are more auditory. Um, but we're all visual. So know that we all create pictures in our mind every single day. So if you're waking up um, and you're imagining a scenario maybe you've got an interview and imagining it going not well or imagining them saying no and that's where you need to sort of flip switch and change what you're focusing on change that picture in your mind and then bring that gratitude back in i'm grateful that i have got an interview i'm grateful and for grateful for an opportunity so gratitude is hugely hugely powerful um so i really encourage you to start changing that picture from one of disaster to one of possibility and the same with your thoughts and it's awareness it's it's having that awareness of the words and the thoughts that you're feeding in your mind so um i think it was who was it that said that you haven't you know been in a cycle of redundancy a cycle of being unemployed okay so maybe that's true but change the language okay so change your language to you know um there's an opportunity around the corner for me you know i'm excited about getting my next job okay change what you focus on change the picture in your mind change language and really focus on what you want to achieve and and visualize that and really getting into um what it looks like to be able to achieve that like how do you stand how do you walk you know what are you saying how do you feel everything like really get into that because this is the way that you can retrain your brain um and this is how you can overcome fear okay and it's not an overnight success thing it's not you know swallow a pill and fear is gone fear doesn't go but as i said before and i will reiterate you can control fear it doesn't have to control you tony says something about you know you get to dance with fear and he shares this wonderful demonstration on stage if anyone's been to upw um where he gets a poor lad from the audience and says right well, hold on to my wrist and whatever i do do not let go so that he's basically saying your fear you'll hold on to me and he starts to dance with fear he dances with this man holding on to his wrist fear and he dances with it and you know and he's demonstrating that you can't get rid of fear but you can dance with it it's there but it doesn't have to control you so really like recognize it does not have to control you You get to choose your thoughts every single day okay and when you do that you bit by bit reprogram your brain the more you do it the easier it becomes to overcome your fear and also feel into that sense of like certainty um and celebration because when you feel into that sense of certainty and celebration about what you're visualizing and what you're feeling grateful for it gives you momentum and when you have momentum that is effectively getting you to, into action so when you're got momentum and you're in action you're in a state of motivation you're coming out of fear and you're in a state of motivation so that allows you to get into action and actually start looking for the solutions instead of staying stuck in fear and feeling paralyzed 
Um, just check in the comments. We are helping ourselves by being here. Yes, exactly. And that's a lovely reframe, um, Eva. Fantastic. You, you absolutely are because you're taking action. Uh, so Eva says she's doing mindfulness at the moment on the second session of anxiety it does quote some of what you say Susie fantastic yeah and mindfulness is so important because when we're in fear we are basically taking we are basing our fears on past experience like something bad happened in our past so it's going to happen now not true not necessarily true you're basing it on a past experience or you're going far out into the future and you're going to go well this is going to happen but Again, you don't know. All we have is the present moment. And as I always say, and I've said for donkey's years now, it makes me sound really old, there's always a solution to every problem. It's just a matter of finding it. There's always a solution. So work with that mindset in mind, okay? And know that like 95% of the things that we actually fear don't actually manifest into reality. And I'll share something um, personal with you, um, everyone here today. I, just a couple of years ago now, I invested in a cryptocurrency scheme. I'd had an accident, which literally launched me out of, of corporate, literally, because I came flying off my mountain bike and serious damage to my knee, leg, foot, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, yeah, and I, I, I got conned out of money and for, oh, a good, for felt like six months, I spent a lot of time in fear. And um, I realized eventually that it wasn't serving me. I had to do something about it. I had to shift my mindset. Um, and I started doing more and more mindset work. I took more action. And you know what? I'm still here today. I've got a roof over my head. I've got clients in my business. I'm doing webinars. You know, I am the proof that you can get past your fear and that your fears don't always manifest into your reality. And when they do, if they do, the likelihood is that you can handle it because you're stronger then you think, okay, trust me, you are stronger than you think. If I can get through what I went through, um, you can get through what you are going through. So I just, I want you to know that. Well, maybe a little bit emotional, <laughs> reliving all that. Um, so have a conversation with fear. That's another thing you can do. So I did this exercise with the client and I laugh because it's a fun exercise to do. So basically have a, have a conversation with fear. Give that little niggling voice in your head um, a personality, give it a name um, and have a conversation with it. If it says something negative to you, say something positive back to it. So one of my clients named her, um, we call it like inner, the inner mind monkey, should we say, she named it Horace after this miserable uncle that she had that lived in a mining town. And she found it really useful because it, you know, as I said to her, like, um, oh, what did I say to her? You know, you are not your mind. Okay, you are, you know, you are not your mind. Um, and it does, your mind doesn't own you. And by, by creating like a persona for, for that internal voice in your head for fear, it allows you to recognize that you are separate. Okay, you have fear, but it, fear doesn't own you. They're two separate things. So give that a go and let me know how you get on. Also, look at the evidence. So Often when we get into fear, we start telling ourselves stories like, I can't do this, this isn't possible, I'm gonna have this happen to me, this is gonna keep continuing in my life. Well, what, what, what's the evidence that this is actually gonna happen? Okay, how much of it's in your head and how much of it's actually true? Okay, because a lot of it is just false evidence appearing real, right? It's not true. So really ask yourself, like, where did this thought come from? What actual evidence is there that you're going to lose your home, for example? Like that was my fear. I was going to lose my home. I was still paying my mortgage. I had reduced mortgage payments, um, but I had a part-time job or a couple of part-time jobs. I was building my business. And looking back at my expenses now, it was only two months out of a year where I didn't cover all my expenses and I had savings. So there was no evidence there other than the stories, which isn't evidence, it's a story that I was going to lose my home. So know that it's often not as bad as we think it is. We just, our mind just likes to take it out of proportion. So look at the evidence. And the other thing I'd say is focus on the short term. And this goes back to what I said earlier about um, taking things from the past experience and looking far into the future. What we have is the present moment. So focus on the short term instead of looking at the long term. Oh, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to be homeless. Whatever the scenarios or stories are, which they are, they're stories that you're telling yourself. Come back to the present moment. 
you know, practice gratitude in the morning, create your day with gratitude, build that momentum, get into action and focus on the short term. What one thing do you need to do today to move the needle forward? What one thing today can you do that will need move the needle forward? Okay, whether it's your career, your relationships, your health, whatever it may be, take one small action. As I said earlier, one of our biggest fears is the fear of the unknown. I know one of the lovely ladies popped in the chat about, uh, about the bit about the unknown. Um, but if there's a fear of the unknown, what you can do is educate yourself. So I know there's a lot of things happening in the assistant industry and there's a lot of trainings out there. So if your fear is that you don't know enough or you're not tech savvy enough, take a free, free training or invest with someone that can give you the skills that you need because then it will take you out of the fear that you don't know enough in terms of tech or whatever it may be and you can actually get that knowledge. I kind of want to just end um, with um, a quote from um, a high performance coach called Brendan Bouchard and I love this quote and he says unless we are being chased by a deadly animal or deranged human or face imminent physical harm like fall into our death fear is just bad management of our mind and i just love that i think that's so powerful fear is just bad management of our mind if you take away anything from today's talk know that fear is just bad management of our mind we can control fear fear does not need to control us okay so i'm just going to check we've got some comments in from fevin <laughs> he sent it to me privately but i think it's fine to he just said that i'm amazing so <laughs> um i think it's fine to share um yeah he, he's he's saying it privately but he's just saying can we share the recording later absolutely paul will be on the case um with that but i'd love to hear people's key takeaways from today like what what was the biggest thing that stood out to you? Was it a quote? Um, was it a tip? Um, and what shifted for you in terms of how you are going to approach fear? While you share that, I'm going to drop a couple of links into the chat. Um, so for those that are looking around or thinking around um, building a VA business or if they know of anyone that is, there's a link to my business Kickstarter emails that go out every Friday and also a link to my five things you need to know before you quit nine to five. So if that's relevant or of interest to you, click on links, download it, and there's lots of resources in there. So let me share that last quote with you, Eva, because the one from Brendan Bouchard, he is an amazing high performance coach. Like he's one of the top high performance coaches in the world. So unless we are being chased by a deadly animal or deranged human or face imminent physical harm, like fall into our death, fear is just bad management of our mind i've popped it in there so if you want to take a screenshot or if you <laughs> or if you want to um copy that and what i would do is encourage you to put quotes like that positive affirmations things like you know fear doesn't need to control me i can control fear or i'm controlling my mind whatever you say whatever quote resonated put it where you see it i've got something in front of me sorry that's one of my positive affirmation reminders that goes off. I forgot to put it on um, black mode. So I've got things um, stuck to my window, which I did this morning. And one of the things says that I am in control of my thoughts. And this is where I sit and this is where I work. And when I look up, I see that. And every time I see it, it's a reminder. And it's constantly reprogramming my mind that I am in control of my thoughts. And when you're in control of your thoughts, you're in control of fear and how you manage that. So that's my little share for today, dead on 12.30, according to my clock. So I hope you found that useful. Please share me your feed, share your feedback, and let me know what you found useful or what you'd like me to talk about in other sessions. And I can always work around um, that and put something together, which I think will be useful. Just what the doctor ordered. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> um, Carmel from Ireland. Start the day with gratitude is the best medicine. Grateful for all that I have. Love that last quote. I'm going to blow it up and leave it on my laptop. Brilliant. Love it. Um, thank you, Susan. It was a brilliant session. Touched on the button. Brilliant. Back to Paul. Fantastic, Susie. And um, 
what can I say? You know, halfway through, the, you're, you're getting a little bit emotional with sharing, yeah. you know, sharing stories. It shows the, um, it kind of shows the passion that you have yeah. for, you know, for, for these topics. And I am um, knowing that, you know, knowing conversations that I've had with certain people, that's, um, that's one of the things that people really resonate with when they, when they speak to you. They love the fact that you're kind of sharing your personal journey and, you yeah. know, you're kind of putting yourself out there. So, you know, huge props for you for right, doing You're going to make me cry. <laughs> honestly, but um, it's important because, like, you know, one of my messages which I love to share with people is that I want people to know that they're not alone, yeah. that they're not alone with their fears, they're not alone with how they feel. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so much support out there in the world. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, carry on. It's a very special person to be able to, to, <laughs> to do that. So um yeah it's wonderful to you it really is um some great takeaways from that as always um i yeah, i think you and i share the same thought process i follow brendan and tony so i've quite, so i've heard a couple of those um already but it's um it's good to kind of bring them out into the into the public when, when um when you were talking it, it reminded of it reminded of me when i first went into business with with david and the fear of not being able to pay my mortgage and yeah. losing my home. Yeah. Kind of, you, you know, you kind of you use it as a driver, don't you? So, yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, it's a, it was a great session. And Look where you are now, Paul. <laughs> we've taken a few steps back recently. Well, you know, few steps back, few steps forward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, lots of steps forwards. The yeah. Lot. And you're doing so much, so much for the assistant industry. I mean, I don't join all your webinars because I'm so busy in my business. But, mm. you know, what I deliver and the other uh, the other webinars you put together, I know that through everything you've done and the people that you've brought in board, you've, you know, you've touched people's lives. And that's that's just really special too. You'll, you'll get me going in a second. <laughs> it's, it's never about me. You know that. Yes, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, that's what I always say. So look, thank you for everyone's um, wonderful comments. I'm glad to see that. Um, I'm glad to see that that everybody is is taking lots away from it. Um, yes. And as always, Susie, thanks thanks for your time. Um, huh. um, a couple of people on Facebook have said hello and joined in. Um, the um, the recordings will go up. Um, later on this week we give it a couple of days and then yep. um, and then then we'll put the recordings up so um so that will be done okay. and uh, i'll put the uh, links in it's your bsn facebook group isn't it yes yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. i'll put the links into there for anyone that is interested in the business kickstarter the weekly emails or the five things you need to know before you quit the nine to five if they're looking at the va avenue so i'll go and pop that in i'll pop a little summary in of what we talked about into the bsn group for anyone that just wants a quick summary of some tips but the replay will be available as Paul says for anyone that isn't able to make it today because I know a lot of people are actually trying to get back into that swing of things and back into the office etc. Yes I mean we definitely see a lot of that we're definitely seeing lots of people kind of watching replays now so um, it's good the message is getting out there and it's kind of continuing to, to kind of yeah. you know to, to, to get hits and views as, as the days go by so it's, um, so it's all good. So, Thanks everybody. Um, thanks everybody um, for your time. We really, really appreciate it. And um, we will see you uh, next week. We've got uh, we've got Lauren Bradley from the officials coming on to do a tech um, to do a tech session. Then we've got Rhiannon Ward coming up, um, and obviously we've got Susie again in a couple of weeks' time. And um, as always, look out for the VA Startup Guide, which is on October the first. Yeah. So, um, Thanks for your time, everybody, and uh, good to see you all. Yep. Take care, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks very much. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.